be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading is taken from John chapter 14, from verses 15 to 21. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me any more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Jesus was arrested and taken away to be crucified he told the disciples in the gospel reading that you've just listened to that someone known as the Holy Spirit would be sent to not only be with them but also to be within to actually live within the believers as well isn't it easy to forget that Jesus knew all along that the crucifixion would happen that the resurrection would also happen but beyond that after the resurrection that the Holy Spirit would come too to energize and to fill the lives of the disciples who would subsequently feel like orphans Jesus knew what they would feel like in the future I will not leave you as orphans, Jesus said. But in a little while, I, said Jesus, will come to you. And on that day you will know that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The penny will finally drop that Jesus is none other than God, in the community of God, known as the Trinity. Because the future of the Gospel, the future of the then yet to be formed early church was going to rely entirely on that motley crew of confused and often failing disciples. In fact without the coming of the Holy Spirit everything would have stopped. Even after something as incredible as the resurrection even that wasn't enough they would need the Holy Spirit Jesus knew that without the help of the Holy Spirit nothing of any lasting significance would have developed because Jesus' new life even that new life that burst out from the tomb on that first Easter day needs to be alive in our hearts Jesus said, because I live, you also will live. And you know, even the prophets from the Old Testament, they looked forward to a time when God would write his law in people's hearts. And strangely enough, one of the words associated with the Holy Spirit, with his role in our lives, is the word parakletos which has legal overtones like advocate or legal assistant sometimes the word comforter or helper is used but the overall job of the Holy Spirit as far as we're concerned <clears throat> is to come alongside us to encourage us to support to defend 
to strengthen. Isn't it amazing that God in Jesus has seen our need and not only died and rose again on our behalf but literally comes now to visit us again and again in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now we formally in the church celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit on Whit Sunday. But why wait until then? Even now in the midst of our present challenges, let's open our hearts afresh to the Lord who wants not only to be alongside us but also within us to live in you in your heart in your life to give you the support that you need that you actually can't be without come Holy Spirit we pray in Jesus name Amen let us pray Lord Jesus, we praise you and worship you. You alone are worthy, the one who was once dead, but is now alive for evermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, help us to realise that you really are with us. Help us to realise afresh that the power of your resurrection has an impact and a relevance for each of us, even 2,000 years later. Help us now in this in-between time in the church calendar as we prepare for Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit. A coming that is not merely one that is God alongside us, but is actually God within us. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, as we return in the very near future to communal worship together, Bless your congregations in this benefice of ours. We are so aware that some of our brothers and sisters in Christ from every parish in this benefice of Tankersley, Thurgoland, Wortley and Pilly will not be physically with us because they have sadly died during the lockdowns. In a sense, they've got back to communal worship before us, but in the courts of heaven. Lord, we will miss them here now, but we know that they are worshipping alongside us in the church triumphant above. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our parishes who will be having their annual general meetings this week. We also pray for Thurgoland as it goes through the process of appointing a new head teacher. Bless the one selected and guide them, him or her, to be a good and faithful servant for the children and the community in that place. We give thanks as well for the hard and outstanding work of Suzanne Brown, the current head, who is shortly leaving us. We pray that you will bless her and be with her in her new situation. Lord, we pray for the sick, particularly Anne, Brian, and others whom we name in a few moments now of silence.
Lord, let the healing power of your Holy Spirit be at work in their lives and also in the lives of those who love and care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the bereaved. We particularly pray for the families of Clarice Brook and Paula Kemp. Clarice's funeral was earlier this week and Paula's is next week. We pray also for the Queen, celebrating her birthday this week, but also looking earlier in the week so lonely in the pews of St George's Chapel at her husband's funeral. Bless our Queen and be with her in a special way. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death, and so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Perhaps in your homes you can have a, an agape meal now, as you, uh, in tandem with myself and this sacrament, share 
the bread and the wine, remembering what Jesus did for you and for me. We can eat and drink in remembrance that he died for us. We can feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. And may the body and blood of Christ keep you who love and believe in Jesus, keep you in eternal life.
and hearts in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.